that you guys are starting to get into cinematic world. Some of the things that I talk about in general when, when animating camera, you know, thinking about the the general main movements, like the big movements. Like so typically the camera is going to have one giant move. Like it's either going to be translation or rotation. Like those are, you know, it's probably going to be one of those, those two, I think is going to be the main key movement in the in the camera move. Focusing on those camera moves, I think is important from like an early stage and just getting a sense of like, okay, does it, does it feel good in the main move first? And then I can kind of layer on like, like rotation if I need to, or other types of translation if I want to. Right. But if you get that first move to feel good, then, you know, you can kind of build off of those. So you'll see the set piece here, you'll see bird check, and then you'll see three cameras. There's going to be one that's over here too, as well. I usually just take these and scale them way up if, if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect the camera in general when you scale them like that. We'll start with the easiest one, which is going to be the slide. So if you just, if you just click on that, you'll see that bird check is already in frame of where you're going. I like to start start early and set your um, render settings to make sure that you know what your aspect ratio is going to be. So typically I'll set it to HD 720 and that'll be, give you an aspect ratio of 1280 by 720. You can pick uh, higher than that if you want to, that's fine. But you know, 720 will usually do for now. And you can adjust that, you know, along the way as you go, but it gives you a good basis point for just understanding the framing of your, of your character, of your, um, where your characters are going to be and what's actually going to be on the screen versus off screen. I usually also set the resolution to like 72, just be, so my play blast, like don't go out of control sometimes and the size of them. So I'll open up render settings and I'll go to image size. And that's where you can kind of set that. Your render settings is, you know, there's a little bit of a, an icon here. The other thing that I like to do too is I like to select my camera, which again, in your viewport window on the on the top left underneath view, you select your camera there that, that you're actually using. And then I like to go into the attributes. Sometimes they sh it shows up on the right-hand side or you can hit control A and kind of go in there. I like to go down to display options and in display options, you'll see gate mask opacity and, and the color here. And I usually mess around with that a little bit because what that'll do is it'll show anything that's off screen here. It's it's blacked out, you know, and you can give it a little bit of opacity in order to still see what's blacked out in, in the framing. But you can change that color or how 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 opaque you want it to be if you want to. Like you can literally set it to zero or one. You can if you set it to zero, you can still see your aspect uh, ratio in white there. But if you, and then if you put it all the way to one, you're just not going to see what's past there. It's kind of blacked out. So I usually just leave a little bit so I can see it, but I, I'll try to set that. And then, you know, while we're in here, this is kind of where a lot of the camera settings are, right? You have your focal length in here. You will have it in your in, in just your channel box up here too. So focal length, f-stop, focus distance, they're all over here in your, your channel box too. So you can, you know, you can adjust these, your near and far clipping plane. If you're, if you're getting in your scenes, if you have a large set and you're getting like a lot of noise in your, in your camera, like your, your set in your, uh, in your character kind of breaking up, getting a lot of like visual noise in there, you can adjust your clipping planes and that will usually take care of it. Especially if you're at like a far distance, that clipping plane may just need to be adjusted. So we, as we start, you know, obviously Bur Burkak is moving through. A lot of times, you know, what I'll do is I will grab a panel and pull it off or whatever in perspective, just so I have that kind of view for myself. And I can kind of navigate around there while looking at, or vice versa. Like I'll either do that or I'll I'll, I'll leave the, the main camera view in this tear off or I'll come back to, to it. So where I like to start out, I like to try to understand and play with like where I am, uh, like my start and end frames are going to be. Because a lot of times you, as a director or as somebody that's going to be helping with layout, you 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 understand where you want to start the, the, the shot. And you typically understand where you want to end it and what those framings are and what's important in there, in those shots, right? So here it's important that I get the character 
in the frame, whether it be the center of the frame, you know, you can, you can adjust that however you want to, but at the end of it, and with the slide here, I'm going to want to slide the camera all the way. So I'm going to set a key here and I'm going to set a key at the end is essentially what I'm going to do. Because like this is oriented the way that the camera is facing, it, you know, it makes it a little bit harder for me sometimes to just do a linear move on it. So I'll come in here, I will open up the tool settings and I will change this to, to world a lot of times. And then that way it'll give me like a straight across X, right? And I just know in the graph editor, I'll have to play around with it to understand which one it's actually using, right? In terms of orientation, which I'm okay with because cameras are typically going to be, you know, especially in this move, it's going to be simple. So the key, there's not going to be a ton of keys typically in something like this. So I'm okay with, with, the, with what the curve is going to give me in there and then play around with it. So then I'll go to like the last frame and I'll bring my camera to kind of the framing that I want it to be, you know, like maybe I want him to be in the right third of it. I don't want him to be in the center. Right. And so from there I can play it and get a sense of what the camera is doing. So for me, when I, you know, when I watch it, I'm, I'm getting a couple things, right. Is when you just set it to auto tangent and you look at your curves, you're allowing the camera to slow out and to slow in. So that's automatically getting built in there. And you may not want that, right? Depending on what your shot is and maybe what the next cut is in your shot. So just always be aware of that, is that you may not want that to, to, to be the case. In this instance, we want the character to motivate the movement of the camera. And right now they're moving pretty close together as we start. I want the camera to have to kind of catch up to the character and I want the character to start the to start first. So I'm going to play around with like probably the first like 20 to 30 frames around like just kind of like slowing out uh from from the camera perspective. So I'll so I'll select the camera and I'll you know I'll just start playing around with there. So I'll select the camera and I'll just kind of I'll start to, to play around with with where I think you know, we can, we can start to slow out with it. Right. So here is, you know, you start to see it. And then if I play it, you can, you can really see, okay, well, that was, that's a little fast, right? So that's a little abrasive there. Right. So, you know, he's coming off and, and uh, the camera is like really coming at it. So I can either play around with where that is and kind of move that out a little bit and just see what happens here, you know, to like frame 30 and then get a better sense of him like taking off right so you get a you get a a still it's like it's not bad but but uh it feels still like they're kind of taking off at the same pace and then he kind of like ramps up after that so he starts to pull ahead of the camera a little bit right but I, but i do want that to slow a little bit more so even at 10 i could uh i could set a key here to kind of bring this and kind of slow that down a little bit so right but you know you can see a jump in him at some point here where it, where it all started i think it's between 10 and 30 where that jump is kind of happening right so you know either i move this out or i, or I play around with just getting rid of it and see what happens here so here i can see that you know, he's he's definitely like moving before the camera is, which is good. But again, it might be just a little bit too close to him. So I'll move that out a couple frames. And this is what this is like, you know, again, what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to play with a little bit here. And now the character himself, you know, again, you're gonna have different factors here, right? The character himself actually may be contributing to this by his his uh cog and where we're where he's moving off of that could be slowing out which it is so if i actually move that up a little bit and see what he's doing i could actually get him to move a little bit faster and not have to rely strictly on the camera to do this right so i did that and look at uh, that that really gets him moving right 
So we're just playing around with that a little bit and how much he actually. So now you get a sense that like, again, he's motivating the camera to start to, to do this move and the slide and all that stuff, right? Like that's that's the overall goal of, uh, of the slide here is like one, you don't want them to get too far into the, the right third of the frame and to be pushing unless like there's motivation to do that. You know, this is, this is good practice to, to, to start to think about, like, again, you want the character to motivate that. Um, and then you want him to kind of stay in frame as you, as you go to. So at the end, you know, again, he's kind of slowing down a little bit and he slows down here. And then the camera kind of slows a little bit after him. So he's, kind of stopping a little bit and that motivates the camera to continue to go a little bit further past him or stop around there which is you know again also something that is is uh is good right like you kind of want the character to kind of slow down and the camera to kind of keep moving a little bit before and um something to think about is a lot of times we would never put a camera frame like the end frame or sometimes even the start frame on the last key I would take that key and then move it like three frames, three to six frames off the timeline. So I knew there was still continuous motion and the camera wasn't coming to a complete stop, right? Especially in the cut where there's action. Those are some things to think about too.